Hey guys, how are we all doing? So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking through how I managed to turn my Chow Chow's skin condition around over the past year. Now, if you stay with us all the way until the end of the video, you're gonna see how I managed to turn his skin from this to this. Okay, I just wanna start this video by saying I am not a vet. I am definitely not an animal expert. This video is purely just based on our own experience, our own journey. And in this video, I'm just gonna take you through the steps and the remedies that we have done um, to get us to a point now to where he has nice, healthy fur and skin. I'm gonna be showing you several pictures throughout the video so you can see that journey that we have been on. I have kind of touched base on this subject before. I'm gonna link down in the description box below if you wanna kind of go back to them. But let's start with the base of the story. Let's like reverse time and go back to where this all began. So when Carter was one, um, he kind of started with little areas biting himself. It started with his legs and his paws. And I know that this is very common with majority of dogs out there. A lot of them do kind of chew their paws. So I just felt like it was something that all dogs do. He was completely fine. There was no bloodshed or any kind of like really bad injuries from it. Um, so I kind of left him to it, to be honest. And I always knew that when I bought the Chow Chow, uh, there was a common thing that a lot of people said about Chow Chows having hot spots. Now, I did kind of buy him near to the summer, so I felt like this would just pass. But things just tended to get worse. It moved from like small areas of what I thought he was just nibbling himself or cleaning himself to kind of big areas, um, especially on kind of the back area near his bum. He really, really started to, to go at these areas and kind of moved on to pulling out his fur. So then I kind of started to get a bit more worried. It moved then onto his tail. He was literally creating bold spots on his tail. Um, and just pulling all the fur out. So this is when I started to realize that there was a problem. Rashes then started to show. Um, it had big rashes under his neck. Then kind of when I really got worried, obviously it's never nice to see your dog in pain. It's never nice to see problems with your dog. Um, and when I really started to get upset and worried was when he was basically biting into himself. So he, his irritation was so bad, he was literally eating at his own kind of skin to get at the irritation. Kind of like a human when we have chicken pops, we itch them um, and we can create scars in ourselves, but we do it because if that irritation is so bad. And that was what was happening with him. He was like biting himself and creating them wounds, which were getting infected. There was pus coming out. It was not nice at all. And his skin was just so sensitive. Where Carter really likes to be tickled and have his ears kind of tickled, um, he just really was flinching at the thought of anyone touching him. So anytime like I touched his back, he really wasn't enjoying it. He would kick out his leg and you could just tell that his skin by even just touching him was so, so sensitive. Now, obviously the first thing that I did was I went to the vets. And at this point when I went to the vets, we'd kind of got to that stage where he'd created um, wounds in himself. There was pus coming out. You could tell things were infected. And the vet did say like, I'm quite worried. It is common for Chow Chows to, to have hot spots, but he's really, really gone at himself. So the first thing we did was we got steroid injections, which would help with the wounds, help heal them um, and kind of get rid of any infections. And also Carter was put on um, some tablets called Apoquel. Now these, I think he stayed on for two weeks. Within those two weeks, he did kind of stop a little bit with the chewing, the wound did kind of heal. Um, and also something I arranged on that first vet appointment was a allergy test. I feel like that's the first thing that you should definitely do if your animal has a similar issue is kind of do an allergy test because just like us as humans, we could have uh, hay fever, we could be allergic to nuts. It could be so many things. And I feel like the allergy test could flag up such a simple, res like simple, thing for you to solve the problem. Unfortunately, but fortunately for me, um, Carter had no allergies. So there was nothing outside that he was allergic to. It wasn't grass. So that wasn't going to solve the problem that it wasn't an easy fix because if you do have an allergy test and it comes up with something maybe outside that's affecting your, your pet, you can maybe get injections sometimes to counteract that allergy. But in Carter's case, that was not the issue. 
So then what we did was we thought maybe it could be his food. Now, I have kind of done so much research. I've had so many people, vets and people with dogs themselves, because I feel like sometimes um, people who have similar dogs may have come up with solutions that have helped them. And a lot of people told me to focus on his diet. Now, at the time Carter was on dry food, I felt like maybe the dry food was drying out of his skin and maybe he had a similar version to like eczema and he was really kind of trying to itch himself and that's why he was biting into his skin. So we changed him from dry food over to wet food. I kind of did this for about six weeks because it isn't gonna just change straight away. So for six weeks, I put him on wet food. It did not solve the problem. He was continuing to bite himself. We were back in the vets again, um, back getting steroid injections again and I was like god what is this issue like it just it just wasn't nice to see it was really upsetting because obviously you love your pet more than anything it's less of the fur and the bold spots it's more of like how he's feeling inside like when we don't feel good when we don't feel well I can just feel how he was feeling he was sad he was moping around um so then we moved on to moving away from meat food because I've heard chicken sometimes isn't amazing for your pet. Don't hold me to this. I'm just going on kind of things that I'd heard myself. So I moved him on to turkey and duck. That didn't solve the problem. So then I moved him completely away from meat onto fish. I mean, that stank the house out. I mean, I had to put up, that, up with that for about eight weeks and still it did not solve the problem. So we went straight back to meat. I've tried him on raw food because that was a suggestion. That didn't solve the problem. So I, even with the, the food as well, I changed his treats because obviously a lot of treats are um, meat treats. So I moved him completely away from meat because you've really got to give it a go. So I feel like that is the next step that you could do with your dog. Really look into their diet because just like us, again, with humans, um, sometimes if we get spots, if we get irritations in our skin, a lot of it can come down to what we put into our body. So I felt like that was the next step with him was try and change up his diet to see if that would kind of change the irritation that he had. Now, another thing that I also thought it might be is with him mouthing so much fur, maybe I was taking him to the groomers too much. Um, I spoke to my groomer and made sure that they were using sensitive products, non-alcoholic products as well, because obviously, again, sometimes we can put creams and products on our face and it can irritate our skin. So I just really looked into kind of taking the more natural ways to solve the problem or see if there was a, an easy fix. Um, and also with dogs, sometimes, not all dogs, but with Carter, like if he gets wet and you don't dry it properly, that can sometimes create skin problems. And also an old groomer that I was going to was not washing out his shampoo properly. So it was just sitting on his skin and that could have created um, the problems as well but that did not fix the issue. So my head was obviously spinning. I was going around and around thinking, what could this issue be? And I then thought maybe it could be anxiety. Basically at the time I was living in a flat, he only had the balcony, which he seemed to love. I took him out a couple of times a day for the toilet. Um, sitting up. I took him out a couple of times a day for the toilet. Um, so I thought maybe he had anxiety because, have we got a piggy in the room? Hey. Um, so because he'd go and stay with my friends and my family and they had gardens, I felt like maybe he had anxiety coming back to the flat and he didn't enjoy it. Um, and at that time, luckily I was actually moving or buying a house and I was very close to moving in. So I felt like that could be something I could test when we move into the house. Um, do you want to lie down and get comfortable? Cause you're very warm. So we moved into the house, didn't solve the problem, loved the garden, but didn't solve the problem. So then I thought maybe it was a habit. So maybe he just got used to strangely biting into himself, just like we pick our nails, pick our lips, scratch ourselves. Sometimes we do these things that we've created as a habit. So I actually went and got him a rubber ring. I will show you a picture of this because it is poor, like it is hilarious, but bless him. It's like when you go on an aeroplane and we use those pillows. It was like one of those. He absolutely hated it, but he couldn't physically get around to tune himself. Now, obviously this was not nice to see him. He wasn't happy wearing it. It wasn't comfortable for him. It was a pain in the backside, putting it on and off all the time. I felt bad him sleeping in it. Um, so every time I took it off, he would straight away go back to biting himself again. So I knew that by him wearing it, 
it had stopped him biting himself at the time, but he still had this like anger and, and, and kind of feeling inside that he really wanted to chew himself. So I didn't want to just kind of stop him from, from getting to that, to that itchiness um, and being then in pain because he was so itchy. So then I got him a bodysuit, which again, I'll show you another photo. This was just something that you button up to put on rather than being around their neck because actually the, the rubber ring around his neck was creating big rashes around here. So it was creating more issues. Um, the bodysuit, I mean, it did help because it, he wasn't, again, biting himself, but I still feel like he had those, it, like that itchy feeling. Now, I know a lot of people have said on my social media, maybe you should stop putting him in clothes. Maybe the washing powder you use, or maybe the clothes is itching his skin. And I did get advice on this. And the vet said, I mean, he's in clothes for all of kind of an hour, if that a day. Um, he doesn't wear them out and about. It wouldn't cause a problem. I don't actually wash the clothes because I get them brand new. Um, so that wasn't the problem. The, the bodysuit in itself was a pain in the backside because say it was summer and you let him outside. Stay there, bud. Say you let him outside, he would just go and wee in the bodysuit. So then you'd have to keep washing it. It would stink because you have to keep unbuttoning it because there wasn't a little hold for his doodah. Um, so that didn't solve the problem. So I just took that off because he wasn't comfortable in it all the time. And then I was looking for kind of like what was next that we could try and really resolve this problem. So the next part was a little bit more sad, a little bit more serious because it was an operation. But I feel like I got to this point where I needed to, to do more. Um, and we had an operation put into sleep to check for inside mites. Now, I don't know the full inside out of kind of what inside mites are, but basically it's kind of like fleas because he has his worming treatments, he has his fleas treatments, but he has like inside kind of fleas uh, mites uh, inside of him. And obviously he's biting himself to try and get them, but they're inside of his skin. So what the vet will do is, is put them to sleep. And while putting them to sleep, um, they can take like a skin graft inside and then check for inside mites. He was actually being put to sleep anyway, because I did get him, stay there bud, I did get him chopped, as in his private parts chopped. Um, I did get him chopped because of the dogs didn't seem to like him. I didn't know if it was the scent, so I did both things at once, so I'd only have to put him to sleep once. Now, in a weird way, I kind of was like, please just come back saying, yes, you've got inside mites because there is a solution for that. He can have an injection, it counteracts it, great. I felt like that was the last option, if I'm honest. I felt like it has to be inside mites. I was kind of set on that, that it was gonna be inside mites. But obviously the results came back and it was not inside mites. So I was like, I feel like I'm banging my head against a brick here. This has been going on for like a year now because he was getting to the age of two. Um, he was having bold patches all over him where he was chewing himself. His tail looked a mess. Like it just was so horrible to see that one, he was in pain and two, his beautiful fur that he has was just literally getting torn apart. And he was having these like areas everywhere where he'd like got blood pussing out of them. And it was, it was horrible. Now I did a little bit of research to see if you can give Pyroton, an allergy tablet for humans, to dogs. Um, and it said that there would be no issue doing that. Just make sure that obviously you're not given too many. So I started him on one allergy tablet to see if that would help. Um, to be honest, it did help a little bit. It kind of like delayed him itching himself in a sense. He wouldn't do it all day. And then in the evening, it'd really start to go it again. It'd come back really strong, kind of the irritation and the skin condition. Um, so I was like, what am I meant to do here? Like literally, I, I, I feel like I'm lost. I feel like there's nothing more for me to do. And then my parents had him for a couple of weeks and they bumped into another Chow Chow owner who kind of, they got in discussions about his skin and, and what he'd been going through. And they actually said that Chow Chow had exactly the same thing. It was very common in Chow Chows. It was called hot spots. Some have it worse than others. Just again, like hay fever, some can have it really bad and some have it not as bad. Um, and what they'd found is, and I feel like we've gone in a full circle here, they'd found that they did a lot of research on the medication that I gave them right at the start of this called Apoquel. And dogs could live on that. And this is where I'm saying I'm not a vet or a dog expert. Dogs could live on it healthily, getting regular checks from vets just to make sure that they're, they're fine taking it. Taking one of these every day, really stopped their dog doing it. And I was like, right, I'm going back to the vet. I'm getting four weeks worth of Apoquel to see if this stops him from doing it. 
I obviously had a great conversation with my vet to see if this was possible for him to live on this, taking, what, like, taking them every day. He said it was, but obviously regular checks were kind of advised. So I started the four week program with him, no biting at all. Now we are six months in, I think. I started with two tablets a day, one in the morning, one in the evening. I just put them in his food. Um, and that was what was advised by the vet. Now, my vet actually advised take two a day, every day, but I've lowered him down to one a day now, so the dose is lower, and he still has not bit himself. So his fur is completely back to normal. Come here. His fur is completely back to normal. He's not biting himself. He seems happy again. I mean, he absolutely loves meat food, and he's back on his meat food, and that's, really nice to see that he's happy again and yeah i feel like this is why i'm saying i'm not a vet because i'm not obviously saying straight away go to abiquel lie down because you're snorting like a pig and everyone's just gonna hear a piggy on this obviously i don't want to advise you to go straight to abiquel that is not the quick fix please go through somewhat of these steps to see because it might be a quicker solution for you guys rather than him i feel like he has a very very worst case of the hot spots so I feel like he really, really took every step for us to kind of come back in a full circle and go to Apoquel. So I'd advise that you do the skin test first. I advise that you change, his, like change your pet's diet. Go through these steps and remedies um, to try and get to the bottom of it because it might be something like a skin allergy. Like the skin allergy test might flag up something straight away. But I don't want to advise you to drug your dog, but Apoquel, he is completely happy, completely fine. I go for regular checks and he's healthy and it really has resolved the problem. Now, something I will say is obviously medication never comes at a cheap price. I personally go straight to the vets to get this. It is quite expensive. I think I pay... I think it's like 200 pounds for three months worth and obviously i have lowered the dose so this lasts longer because that's based on two tablets a day so it is very expensive but i mean for me carter's health is far more important than that money however i know that not everyone has the money to be spending it on medication like that so one thing i did get advised is you can go to your vets and ask for a prescription and you can use that prescription to buy it online but you have to have a prescription from your vet to buy it online and I do believe it is cheaper. I just felt like I wanted to go straight to the vets and get it so I knew that I was getting the right stuff from the vets and I knew he was taking the right things rather than kind of just buying something online. Um, also, obviously, to anyone that doesn't have pet insurance, I advise you getting pet insurance because, I mean, when I got Carter, I was like, he'll be fine, he'll be healthy, he'll never injure himself. And then this whole skin, this whole skin condition, you wanna come closer to me? This whole skin condition happened, and I mean, it can cost you a fortune. Obviously, the, the operation he had, that was money. Everything just costs money, so I would advise you get pet insurance, and obviously, you can use your pet insurance to buy the medication, so hopefully, that would cover you for that. But yeah, I, I guess we've kind of, for right now, I've spoken about this subject before. What do you mean in a minute, darling? You can go and play outside. I guess where I've spoke about the subject before, I wanted to come on and just kind of discuss that now we're at a really healthy place. We're, I'm really hot. Um, we're at a really healthy place. Come on, lie down for five more minutes, darling. Come on. We're at a really healthy place now. His fur is better than ever. He's happy again, apart from right now, he just wants to go and play. Um, so yeah, I wanted to come on and kind of talk about the success of the story and now we're in a good place rather than just always talking about the bad parts. But if you have any questions at all, like I said, I'm not a vet, I'm not a expert but I can kind of help with with where we've been on our journey pop them down in the comments box below please please give us a thumbs up if this video helped or if you enjoyed this video and uh, I'm going to be doing a lot more videos with Carter kind of on training and stuff so please don't forget to go and subscribe we're going to talk about how I managed to train this stubborn stubborn breed that he is but he's so loving um, but yeah that's it for today's video guys thanks for watching um, I hope it was really useful and if you are having problems yourself I really really hope you get to the bottom of it just be persistent keep trying different things it's not going to just resolve itself you've got to try several different things and hopefully you will get that in the end but that is it say goodbye Carter say bye um, but we will see you very soon guys on another video take care we're done well done give a kiss